You're watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We still have Felicity and Osage here. Um, what we're joined this morning uh, for this part of the conversation, which I will be explaining in a bit, uh, by legal practitioner Ivan Sofeli. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're going to be looking at the by-elections as conducted by INEC over the weekend. Um, states like Emo, Bialsa, uh, Cross River, Lagos. There are so many issues coming up from it. Uh, some persons are saying it was well done. Others have some concern. So we'll take, we'll start with the scenario uh, that played out in Emo State. We know for a fact that the um, returning officer uh, announced the results, announced the party as a winner. Uh, there are two candidates who are competing, two different ju uh, judgments on the same day, you know, um, affirming, disqualifying one, affirming the other one. So as it stands, APC apparently won the election in Imo State for the um, Imo North Senatorial District, District to replace yes. um, uh, the late Senator Wadimogu. But no one name has been announced. What, what does this mean? Explain to us, please. Well, when you look at uh, the way the election was conducted, uh, the returning officer have announced the result and announced APC as the winner. Okay? So the other party also, a PDP candidate is also contending the fact that uh, he also won the election. So in that regard, where you have this declaration of multiple candidates, one by an official authority and the other by the acclaimed winner, the candidate himself and his political party, the trux of the matter is that uh, such kind of declaration uh, will hold INEC declaration as the official declaration for that election subject to the process of the tribunal or the, 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 the court where an aggrieved party or the PDP that appears to be aggrieved will have to subject uh, our next conduct to legal scrutiny by filing a petition within uh, 21 days by in, in line with the electoral act to you know, air its grievances in court. There is, there is no point um, declaring oneself the winner uh, where uh, the institution that is saddled with the responsibility have made its declaration. The only way to obtain the institution's declaration is to, you know, subject it to the test of a legal context and then bring it, bring all the evidence and the facts before the law. The law is that once there is substantial non-compliance, with the electoral act and once the substantial non-compliance affects the result or the outcome of the election then there's a case for the petitioner for which the respondent is meant to disprove or to you know uh, make a case to say that there were regularities as against the petitioner's uh, claim of irregularities non compliance to the electoral act and then how the substantial non-compliance to the electoral act affected the result. There's no, re there's no election anywhere in the world that is perfect, uh, but uh, the, the, the level of compliance with the law is what the, the court will look into. So where there is uh, grievous infractions that outlandishly show that a, a party uh, or its candidates, you know, have, uh, you know, obtained the rules, then the courts will step in to make the necessary pronouncement according to law. Okay, so let, let, me, that, let, uh, me, let me, let me, let me, let me ask uh, this question. Subject all their grievances to legal. Uh, Mr. Feli, I want to ask this question. Uh, let me be an airhead for a second to get this clarification. If we say the APC won, the margin, let me see if I have it, the margin, the APC scored 36,811 votes and the PDP scored 31,903 votes. Now, the vote for the APC is for two persons while the vote for the PDP is for one person. If one person scored 31 votes and two people between them shared 36 votes, uh, doesn't that mean that the person, the one person should ordinarily win the case because 
you are voting for a candidate. That, what I do know is not just the party you are voting yes. for. You're voting for a candidate in a party. So if there is no clarity here, and the courts will come back to the place that the role that the court is playing, uh, wouldn't it, from a common sense point of view, be that the one man who got more votes compared to two persons who shared a spot should be the winner? Well, that is the logic of the matter, okay? That is actually the logic of it. Uh, that is clear from the standpoint of arithmetic and, and the rest of it. But if the, uh, the umpire is saying otherwise, you cannot take the laws into your hands. That is why I said that such complaints, such declaration, and then the kind of outcome that we're seeing, or what I make uh, is taking a stand, is such that must be subjected to legal scrutiny, which, I mean, the parties, the candidates, and even the umpire, they are all aware that, you know, all such grievances will end up in court. So uh, whether two persons shared at 1,000 or one person uh, scored, the, the fact is that the, the umpire have made a decision. And that decision is not final, because if the decision is reached in error, it's subject to challenge, OK? And parties are already warming up to you know, file suit in the matter to show that, I mean, we, we, it is expected ordinarily that where you have a by-election, where the whole country is not involved, ANEC is expected to be more coordinated and uh, uh, come out with a better strategy to conduct the election and make it free and fair. Uh, Every time we have elections, we, we find out that we have a worst case. We have worst case scenarios in the by elections where the entire country is not involved. Well, so, fairly, I, I want you. Yeah, apologies for interrupting. I, I, once again, you know, I want people to understand exactly what we're talking about here with regards to Imo State. Um, tell us about the rules um, that should maybe prevent, if any to prevent um, a party from contesting in an election if um, they don't have a candidate. If there are court cases against both candidates, if I am Arume and Frankie Bazim, um, don't you, what would you suggest that INEC should be able to do um, with regards to that political party and the elections? If they don't, because obviously they, they didn't have a candidate or they hadn't decided on which exactly the candidate was. Um, and so, like Felicity had earlier mentioned, it, it then means that the people um, from Imo North are voting for two different people. Um, so what do you think INEX rules should maybe uh, be, uh, be I mean, what way should it be enforced? That a candidate, uh, a political party must have one candidate before election time. And then you, can, you may also I mean, want to share your thoughts on, on the case against... Um, 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 Ibezim, I think that's his name. Yes, Frank Ibezim. There's, you know, two names apparently in his certificates. But go ahead. Yeah, you see, the, the, that has been the law that at the level of nomination, at the level of nomination, the, the, the box stop at the court of the party. The party must send its nominee to INEC, I think, 90 days before the election. That is by the Electoral Act, OK? Now, where you have a court case where there's contestation, and then the party is at crossroad as to who have been, who should be nominated, then if the, if the party ends up with two candidates in this case, in the eyes of the law, it is deemed that the party have no candidates. If you backtrack to a River State, Yes. and then Zamfara State, yes. uh, APC, the same APC, during the last election. You saw how INEC disqualified, uh, sorry, the court disqualified uh, their governorship candidates in, 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 in the states because the Electoral Act have already made provision as to how primary should be conducted. And upon that, the winner's name should be sent to INEC within a time limit. But you find out that the, the APC in Rivers and in Zamfaraden violated the rules or the laws that governs the areas of um, you know, primaries. And then the Supreme Court asked them not to participate in the election at all. Okay? In like manner, in, in, this, in this case, okay, 
even though they have not gotten to the level where the final court will make pronouncement before the election was conducted. But it appears that, um, not preempting the court, but the, the, the court is going to take a clue from the declaration of the Supreme Court in 2019, okay, where as a result of irregularities and, and uh, a lack of uh, reliance or compliance with the Electoral Act, the Supreme Court stopped two states from contesting the governorship election at that level. So we, you cannot have two candidates in an election where one seat is being contested for in the same party, okay? So yes. that same has happened now, but it will be subjected to legal contest, as I said, and the court will make the final declaration in line with precedence uh, uh, of law. Do, do you think if I Ararume has a case anyway um, against uh, Frankie Bezim? Uh, if you've paid okay, attention to the case. Okay, uh, yes. the two names in the certificate. Yes. Yeah, well, there, there, there is a case. There is a case because uh, we also have a precedent. If you, if you check the case of Baeza uh, in the just concluded uh, election, uh, 2019 election, uh, you'll find out that one of the reasons why um, uh, a candidate was disqualified was because the, the deputy governor or the the proposed deputy, uh, the running mate to the uh, yes. governorship candidate then, okay, had almost uh, five names, okay, uh, with affidavit and mending the names and then mistakes being made in the affidavit. And at the end of the day, the candidate came up with so many names. And if you look at the constitution, uh, the constitution is clear as regards disqualification of a candidate, including the electoral act, okay? Yeah, where you have such multiplicity and where the reason for such a multiplicity is contrived by fraud or by an act likely to be deceived, likely to deceive institutions or persons as regards the identity of the person in question, then you have a case, okay? But like I said, uh, there are no two cases that are the same, okay? Um, he, he can contest that, okay, based on law, and then the court will make a pronouncement. But I, I, I still believe there is a case there because uh, a man cannot have, a, a man cannot sustain multiple names and be using such multiple names to, to have transactions with institutions of government and then with persons. All right. There must be clarity in the identity of citizens of, of Nigeria. And that is why the law have made it compulsory that people should have definite, clear identity so as not to contrive fraud and uh, 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 deceive people in the process. All right, Mr. Ofeli, uh, you, you said something earlier that I'd like to uh, bring up. You said the court will make a decision. Um, on, they will go to court at the end of the day. But the, the situation we have was caused by the court in the first instance. It's two separate courts that gave different rulings on similar matters, right? And now we're going to go back to the court. Would it be fair to say that the court is creating um, these um, scenarios in order to amplify its position that is already being criticized in the Nigerian electoral process? Well, I wouldn't say that because when parties go to court, they go to court for different reasons, for several reasons. Now, until you are able to lay your hand on the record of proceedings and the processes and the document file to find out the, the prayers or the claims that are being made by the, at, at the, the court cases at, at the different courts, okay? Because we have had situations where people will say that you go to this court, you get a different order. You go to this court, you get a different order on the same issue. Most times, it's not on the same issue. Most times, they are in these separate courts for separate issues uh, of the candidates. You know that if it were to be a pre-election matter, for example, the law uh, under Section 285, Subsection 9 of the uh, Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, has amended, says that 
where you have an issue against a candidate, okay, you must bring an action before a court within 14 days. 14 days after the occurrence of the issue you are complaining about, okay? You must bring it within 14 days. Now, if uh, some, some persons will bring such pre-election matters within 14 days to say... Okay, network is acting up. Mr. Ofeli, can you hear us? Um, you know, I find that particular um, uh, conversation uh, intriguing. The continued prominence of uh, the courts in our electoral process mm. and the the seeming um, childish bickering amidst party leadership that cannot allow them to pick a candidate from amid. I mean, you, you wonder. You say the party is a family. When you hear politicians come up on television when they are campaigning and say we are a family, we we brothers quarrel, and but you seem right. not to be able to settle your quarrels and then you bring it to the national uh, platform. It, it's really just a. It, it's evidence, really, that. Uh, politics, for the most part of it in Nigeria, is about personal interests. It's not about what the party or the ideologies are. It's not about what the party can truly do for you know for you or for the citizenry or for the electorate. It's about personal interests, and that's why they would continue to fight among themselves uh, to be able to gain control of that senatorial seat and of that governorship seat and one whatever. Yeah, it is. you just you just. Okay, um, I understand uh, Mr. Ofeli is back. Uh, we lost you for a bit. Good to see you again. Um, please, could you just conclude your thought on that? On what? Yeah, we're talking about the role of the courts in the process uh, because we have two different courts. Are they trying to uh, make themselves more relevant in our electoral process or is it just an unfortunate scenario where people cannot settle their internal matters? Well, I, I think I've explained that. Um, part of the problem we also have is that the, the, whole, the whole dispute sometimes you have in an election matter has to do with the way our politicians politic in Nigeria. You know, uh, they, don't, they don't really stay by the rules. And politicians don't even listen to lawyers when they want to get hold to power. I have been involved in a lot of election matters, and I have seen how politicians go high-handed on issues when they advise, they throw the advice away, they get onto the, the arena of conflict and battle to seize power at all means and at all costs. You see, that is the basic problem. That is also because politicians are not punished for obtaining the law. They are not punished criminally, even when some of their actions are criminal uh, infractions. The Electoral right. Act is so weak that it, the, 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 the most powerful in the society or the politicians who have the money and the resources to, you know, mobilize the entire community to run against, to run power against the law, they usually go scot-free with all their criminalities and activities during yeah. election period, okay? Right. Including I'll employing thugs which have been uh, uh, outlawed by the constitution, including uh, employing uh, bandits and, and the rest of them to carry firearms all right, and all just, that. Just so to key to the narrative general, you are painting kind of now, Mr. Ofeli, um, uh, it's not peculiar to the former Biosa State Governor, Siriake Dixon, but um, he, he, he gets some mention now because he just emerged as uh, the um, senator representing Biosa West Senatorial District in the just concluded uh, by election. Uh, just uh, off what you were saying, does the key into the conversation that uh, politicians go to the National Assembly as a retirement home? Because we tend to see, even the case in um, same Biles, uh, uh, the, the governors, the people that are governors were senators before they came back. So is it a situation of you finish from one part, you go to the other, because there is more to be gained by doing that? People just really love you and they don't want you to leave politics maybe. Mr. Feli, do you get the question? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I get it. Uh, yeah, the, the, kind, the way we cross carpets and then the way politicians who most of the times are not there out there to serve is by their personal game. And that is why you see the way they operate, okay? Now, look at the National Assembly as you speak. You have, uh, in the last, uh, in the eighth assembly, we have 21 uh, past uh, governors, okay? in the house and you begin to ask yourself well, what exactly are they doing there 
okay? It's about personal gain. It's about holding and sustaining power. And it's about what they can get from the system. And, and All that right, has Mr. Feli, we're told the, we're out the of time. Of, of this society. Uh, right. People move from being governors, they, they move to the house and then turn it to a retirement home. And they are there, not, not making... Uh, not making laws, adequate laws, really. Look at what is going on in the country, for example. It, you, can, you, you have a national assembly, and then you have this kind of insecurity challenge, and the president, wow. by all standard and ramification, has failed. Evan, Evan and then the, the ninth assembly is unable to come up with an impeachment uh, okay. procedure. Okay, really have to good, thing, good thing that you've gone now. there, because my next question, and it's going to be our last question, um, is you know, in this direction now. Um, what would you say, because it, uh, from comments that I saw on social media yesterday, even from aides of the presidency, uh, it seems Nigerians were low-key being mocked um, for the victory of the APC in these uh, senatorial by-elections. Um, some people even brought up the NSAS protests and said, well, you know, after all the protests and the APC is still cleaning out in the election. So I want to get your thoughts in response to that. Um, the results of the elections, the registered voters, and, and then also look at the number of people who actually showed up to vote. Um, and in you know, all those details, please go ahead yeah, quickly. Before, just to add to that quickly, in Lagos, we know that um, the person that won was unable to vote. Is there yes. any significance there as well? That's like a three-barreled question for you. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, the the man who won uh, Tokumbu Abiru uh, the, was unable to vote because, uh, according to source, he had uh, two voters card. I mean, and then the matter is already in court too. Before now, yes. Um, there is no nothing in the law that says you must vote as a candidate before you can be voted for. Okay, I know a lot of persons who are of age who don't even have a voter's card. And a lot of persons who are of age who have procured voter's card, but uh, because of uh, they are not, uh, they are not uh, motivated by the kind of system, so they just decide not to vote. So that, that rested. I mean, the issue of uh, the NSAS, a lot of people, I saw that on the internet, uh, the social media, and I was, I was, I was pained because the NSAS protest has never been about APC. It is never about a APC. L l let's understand the issues clearly. It's about police brutality and then a call to put a stop to police brutality. That was the, the major issues, the major issue that uh, precipitated the, the, the protests. Now, while the protest was ongoing, a lot of persons also brought in other issues to add to it that are, apart from the NSAS, there are other pressing issues too. And they started calling, some, some persons started calling for re regime change and some persons started calling for a total overhauling of the Nigerian system and, and the rest of it. So I think it is misplaced, it is misdirected, it is unfortunate that people will talk about, they were saying the Sorosuke generation were not out there to vote. I mean, you ask yourself too, the, the, this by-election, the, the level of um, awareness that was created by INEP was very low, okay? Uh, political participation is supposed to start from the local government and local government authorities to the state level and all that. A lot of persons were not even aware that there was a by-election coming because the level of uh, awareness was low. And then in Lagos State, the reason APC clinched it also, remember that since 1999, APC had held Lagos from uh, yes. AC to ACN to APC, they are still the same uh, thing and all that. So if you are coming from another party like PDP and the rest of them to, to win or obtain the process in Lagos, you must have a, a kind of strategy that is uh, forceful and robust. Now, when you ask yourself, the, the candidate, uh, Mr. Badamosi, Badamosi, who contested that uh, election, what kind of strategy did he deploy? What kind of strategy? So many persons don't even know him, even though he contested as the, 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 the uh, governor, um, was a governorship candidate of the state, uh, sometimes in uh, 2019. But the truth of the matter is that APC have a lot of structures in Lagos, a very formidable structure in Lagos. And for you to be able to obtain such structure, you must come with a superior strategy. I didn't think he did that, okay? 
Um, I, don't, I don't think he did that. To be All fair right. to him, I, I, I had thought that there should be some level of mobilization and some level of um, optics that okay. is different from what we've always seen. I know, so I know we're, 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 we said that was the last now, question, but if you can, if you can respond to this in um, 30 seconds, I'll be very grateful. The debtor of the, office, the police officers um, in a boat um, mishap, um, does it point to issues with logistics still, or is it just an unfortunate incident? And what should be done for these officers? What should be done to or their families? Um, I'm, I'm asking, does it point to the problems still with logistics, now getting materials to uh, locations for election, or it is just an unfortunate incident? And if that is the case, what should be done for the families and uh, those who suffered? For the family, I, I don't get your question the, the very well. The police officers that drowned in Bial's estate. I, I don't know if you're oh, aware oh, of yeah, that. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm yeah. asking, does the yes. sad situation... Uh, well, I, see, I, I, I have I had thought that um, by now, by now, the federal government would have funded INEC enough so that they will be able to, to use, you know, good means of transportation to riverine areas. If you see how election materials are transported, even, even, even on, on land, if you see the kind of rickety buses they use to transport election materials, you begin to ask yourself, who is in charge of logistics in INEC? They rent these vehicles. Now, the, the, that of the, the sea, they have to rent sometimes these local boats, okay, to go to the heat and land, where sometimes you'll be in the sea for three, four hours, okay, in the riverine areas. And, you know, some of these uh, speed boats were are locally made, and then uh, some could be good. Was you have a lot of issues with them, and the native who operate these uh, boats are people who will not will not die in the water because they are born into in the waters. But for the policemen and the rest of them, and their authorities and staff, the the, the level of um, risk they put themselves through in this is one that calls for serious overhauling. Now, right. these uh, officers who just lost their lives, you begin to ask yourself, what, 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 what the, the police do not have adequate insurance policy, okay? The welfare package, I mean, after their demise to their family, sometimes it does not even come. And when it comes, it comes late. And sometimes uh, the family will have to go through a harrowing experience before they even get the benefits and the rest of it. Yeah, so loads of I, issues, I but it, it is. I'm, 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 I'm sorry to interject again. Uh, we, we have to wrap things up, but I, I get from what you're saying that their welfare needs to be addressed as quickly as possible. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Evans Ufeli, for joining us on the breakfast this morning. All right, I guess the network uh, came up again. Yeah. again. But he did uh, make uh, pertinent issues. I think this is one scenario that should not just uh, go slide under the table. Uh, the families of those um, officers who were doing good work um, that died deserve some um, attention. Um, Evans, are, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, OK. okay. I, I was saying uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, that's the much time uh, could let us uh, do with the conversation. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Have a good day. It really just also makes you um, question the little, little details with regards to our electoral process. You know, like you were mentioning, logistics, uh, taking uh, sensitive materials to different places, the hinterlands the, and, and all of that. Um, INEC offices across the country, in, in, at what point are we going to have things that are fully electronic? At what point are we going to have things that don't require traveling through the you know seas you know to take them to someday to hopefully areas. in our lifetime um it, it's just and and you listen really to the amount of billions that are voted for um, i neck every electoral uh, process um you 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 really have to ask yourself where all this money goes into um every single time that there has to be an election um, yeah, so unfortunately, these policemen, of course, you know, we would never have them, you know, back. their families would have to live with this forever. But um, we should, I, I feel we should do better. Um, we certainly we should. should. I agree with you completely. Every time disaster strikes in Nigeria, it should be a time for us to do better. 
I guess. Not um, and move on. Let's see what the government does with this one. Um, all in all, it wasn't a terrible um, um, outing for INEC. Uh, some places recorded a very good success uh, turnout. Um, we do know that there was an inconclusive one in Zamfara State. Uh, we yet to get a media briefing on the way forward um, for that. About 12 local government, uh, 12 uh, council areas yes. were. Um, is it council areas now? All units were cancelled in that election. Um, so as it stands, there is no winner. So we wait uh, for our next briefing on that. But generally, uh, the emo scenario, unfortunate as it was, um, is still not... Um, the total picture. There were some uh, good outing uh, by INEC uh, with this one. I uh, would thank you for watching thus far. We're not done yet. We'll be back after this break and we'll be talking about um, spraying of money, especially by public officials. Some say uh, some people are being hypo uh, hypocrites by uh, criticizing a uh, public official for something that they do, even as private citizens. And there are those that are saying, no, there is no argument whatsoever. Why would a public official who knows the reality of the people he leads behave in such a reckless manner? Well, we'll have our guests join us to you know, give us further perspective on this to go away. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.